My name is Jim Pagliarini, and I have the great honor of being the founder and the first president and CEO of PBS Reno. We signed on the air September 29th. We were very excited about Reno and Northern Nevada having its very own public television station. We got into the control room. Tom Werner, our chief engineer, had the honor of pushing the button. Tom Werner, who really worked incredibly hard to make this happen. I just sat back and beamed. You looked around the room, there were a number of our board members, the founding staff that we had hired at the time. And I still vividly remember pushing of the button and the Sesame Street theme song starting. And it was just a smile and a, a great relief that it happened. And then we had to get to work and actually run the station. <laughs> With somebody who is a general manager, you absolutely have to surround yourself by people who are smarter than you, who really know what they're doing in their specific area. And you really do become more of a conductor of an orchestra rather than a solo performer. The decision to leave Channel 5 in 1997 to go to work in the Twin Cities was a really, really challenging one, a uh, difficult one. So what I'm doing now that I retire is first and foremost decompressing. I and mean, I think after working 40 plus down. years, and most of those years as the head of an organization, Treated I welcomed uh, the opportunity to just have some me time. No need. I'm reading more than I've ever read before. I'm playing my guitar more than ever before. I was born in a small town in northeastern Pennsylvania, Wyoming, Pennsylvania. It's an anthracite coal mining area. So my grandparents came to this country to work in the coal mines. I have a brother and a sister, both of uh, who actually stayed in Wyoming Valley, Pennsylvania. As a child, I was very active athletically, but I also had a great love of music, which I uh, continue today. My parents were always just very supportive. There was never any pressure for any one of us to become a doctor or a lawyer. It was just enjoy life and be kind to people and do as well as you can. I like to joke, you know, small liberal art colleges that had very bad football teams were interested in uh, recruiting me. I ended up going to Princeton University. I thought I wanted to go to medical school. My undergraduate degrees in biology has nothing to do with what my lifelong career was. After my work in the dining halls, I would go home and I used to turn on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. What intrigued me about Fred Rogers was tapping into the feelings and the emotions of children, which is extraordinarily difficult to do. I was taking a psychology course at the time and I decided uh, to write a paper about Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And I had an opportunity to write Fred a letter saying if I could come and visit him and interview him. And he wrote back and said, yes, you know, I'd be happy for you to come and interview me, but there's a, a man in Princeton who's actually a producer of the show. I met a man uh, by the name of Elliot Daly and became an absolute total convert to what uh, Fred Rogers was trying to do and, in fact, what PBS was doing at that time in building its children's service. I worked with him for a couple of years, but then decided to pursue a graduate degree in what was then called educational media. In that course at Temple University, I learned a bit about education, learned about film production, television production, and how media can be used to help kids. I was very fortunate to be offered a job in San Jose, California. The station in San Jose was KTEH. It was a 60-day consulting job for $65 a day. The president of the station went to high school with the producer uh, of Mr. Rogers that I knew at Princeton. Elizabeth and I packed up that Pinto station wagon and drove from Philadelphia to San Jose, California for this 60-day job. And then that 60-day job blossomed into a four-year job in San Jose and then my move to Reno 
to be part of the team that built PBS Reno. Part of the beauty of life sometimes is not knowing what you don't know, but having confidence and having really good people around you to help you through it. I don't reflect much on the youth angle of it, and I certainly wasn't any more mature than any other 27-year-old. <laughs> we had fun most of the time. I mean, work was fun. The founding staff was part of something quite unique in anybody's professional experience. Having the opportunity to be at the beginning of something and being at the founding of something is a pretty special experience.